Guys, what's up? This might seem like a really basic video, but trust me, there is a bunch of guys out there that have no idea how to install a barreled action into a chassis. Now this probably includes the person from YouTube that has to tick off this video so that I can feed my family. This is a rifle stock, more specifically the MDT timber stock. That that you see behind me is the actual firearm. So the purpose of this video is to put that inside this. We won't be modifying that YouTube person. So therefore, this video does not contravene your terms of service. So without further ado, let me show you guys how I go about installing a barreled action into whether it is a stock like this, a sort of more fancy chassis system. If you have a mini chassis built in like this, the fundamentals are very much the same. So this could be an ACC, this could be an XRS, whatever the case may be. So we're gonna use the timber today because that is what I need to do. Something really cool that I noted that they did, they have these nylon screws here to keep your action screws in the chassis. I might actually 3D print some of these and perhaps make them available to you guys because what I end up doing on my, let's take my ACC Elite here for a second, I have to use electrical tape and then I tape the action screws to the rifle itself so that I don't lose my action screws because then you inevitably don't know which action screws are for which rifle whereas these nylon screws seem like a really really good solution. So the first thing we're going to need to make this successful. And this is very, very important. I cannot stress this enough, and I'm gonna do my best to link these tools for you down below. You're gonna need a torque wrench. And the reason we want a torque wrench is because we want to be able to do this repeatedly. So that if we take our rifle out and we put it back, next time our rifle is torqued to the same specs and therefore should be relatively on zero. You're also not cranking it down enough to actually torque your action, so that's very important. Now if we read the manual, which this video should save you to do. If you're running a centerfire rifle, we wanna be talking these two screws down to about 65 inch pounds. Now today in the video, I'm gonna use this new Wheeler torque wrench kit that I got in the US on my last trip. This is super nice. They're also done both ways so that you can also loosen things without damaging the bit, which is generally something you don't wanna do on a torque wrench. So we're gonna use this guy over here just to get the action screws out of the nylon nuts and that's going to be very simple and loosen that and i'm absolutely going to steal this nylon nut idea well done bye bye cool okay we're going to put the front one over there i just got a little table here because i want to be able to put stuff down sometimes you need to use an extension too especially when there's a little bit of a longer reset which doesn't seem to be an issue on this specific stock now again this is a stock not a firearm now fun story when i recently traveled to the us i actually flew there with a stock and i had a bit of a nightmare with the guys from emirates because they were looking at it in my bag going like that's a rifle and i said to them very specifically this is not a rifle and then they phoned the police the police came over they inspected it and then they told the people at emirates this is not a rifle but this is the problem with incompetence and that is very much something we deal with on YouTube too as content creators. The people in charge that write these policies and also have to enforce them have absolutely no idea what they're looking at. So hopefully this video can also serve as a guide to educate those people about that. Now, where was I? At the Emirates thing, they actually had the guy from Emirates on the phone and I was listening to a voice message he sent to the other Oka and you gotta love the Cape Colors for this because he said, Yada my bro, that thing looks most dangerous. And I just burst out laughing because um, that's kind of how the Cape Colored speak and it was absolutely precious. So I explained to him what it was all about and he was like, okay, good, you're good to go. So anyway, needless to say, made my trip fine. Now, what we want to do is pop our barrel action into this. We've got the rear action screw seems to be semi held back by this rubber grip if I really wanted to. There we go, it's just come out and I've dropped a tiny washer that I'm gonna quickly save here while I see it. I'm very glad I saw that falling. Thank goodness for proper studio lights and the front one seems to be sitting in there too. There we go, got that. So just make sure you're not losing those kind of things. For the most part, I'm not necessarily running washers on mine. If it gets provided, then I advise you to use them. Now, I've already taken the bolt out of this rifle, so the rifle is safe. 
I like to do this while standing on a workbench or something like that. You can even do this on the floor, but that won't be the most visually appealing thing for you guys to watch. So I'm gonna quickly drop this in here. You wanna make sure that this recoil lug indexes against this flat face here. There's usually a nice little recess cut for it there. And then you simply pop this guy in like that. And you can hold it into place and that should give you a good idea to see if you've got enough clearance everywhere. Then we're gonna take our two action screws and remember we've got a 65 inch pound torque wrench. This little wheeler kit, very nice, very handy. I never ever go to the range without having my toolkit with me, whether it is this one or the fix it sticks or whatever I'm using that day, I always have my torque screws with me because I can service my entire rifle with this little bag of screws. Okay, we're gonna go rear action screw at the back. I'm just gonna put these washers on. I'm gonna do the front one first, just to sort of get that going here so that I don't have to worry about that barrel action actually falling out. You should start feel that engage. We're just gonna get that snug, don't worry too much. I'm gonna quickly pick up this action screw that I dropped, pop the washer in there, and then get this rear one started. And I'm gonna show you guys some techniques that I like to use. Oops, crashing into my lights here at the top. By the way, while I'm doing this, I wanna thank the guys supporting the channel on Patreon so much. I recently upgraded to these lapel mics and they've made my life so much easier from a content creation point of view because I can just hit record, smash out a video like this for you guys without having to worry about all the microphones and plugging audio into different things. So that has been an absolute game changer. So thank you very much for the guys supporting the channel on Patreon. I always try and use the funds we get there to make improvements to our production, whether it is lighting or studio or whatever the case may be. With that being said, our rifle is now secured into the stock. Again, YouTube person, this is not modifying a rifle. Just wanna make sure we're still on the same page, but I hope you're enjoying the video so far. For the other guys that are more seasoned shooters, this might be very boring, but this video is needed because we can share this video with our mates that are just getting their first rifle so they don't make the easy common mistakes. So now that we've got this in, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna back the screw out just like a half a turn, so I've got some slop here. Then I wanna make sure we're all the way rearwards, okay, that there's not, that we're seated sort of, you can actually hear that recoil lug seat against the mini chassis, if I do that. So we wanna make sure we're back, and that's also why I like doing this standing up, so that gravity is doing the work for us. Then we're gonna hold our rifle into place and start doing like a quarter turn. So I'm feeling it's starting to go tight there. This should self-level itself, or self sort of center itself, I'm gonna give it another little turn, getting slowly tighter and tighter. And every time I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna give it, let me just get this microphone out the way that is now seemingly a redundant piece of kit. I'm gonna give it a little, a little nice gentle tap like that and that should just seat everything in. That's, I don't know if it's superstition or whatever, but that's how I do it. Give it a nice little tap again and then continue tightening. So front one's at torque spec, rear one is gonna to torque, we're in. We're gonna do the front one one more time, and then one more time on the rear one. Last few love taps, there we go. And then just make sure we're still clicked and off to the races. Now, it is recommended that you check these screws each time before you go out, because eventually, if you shoot enough, they will come loose. Now, I sometimes put a little bit of blue thread locker on this, just to give them like a little bit of extra encouragement to stay in there. But guys, that is it. We have now successfully installed the barreled action into our MDT timber stock. And it is literally as easy as that. I always joke with the guys when they ask me, Pete, is it difficult to do this? I say, it is more difficult to hang up a picture for your wife, especially if there's more than one and you gotta get the like spacing right. So that's it guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Super easy guide again, very, very basic for some of the more advanced guys. Very important after you've done this, Take your bolt, make sure your rifle is safe. I'm visually looking into the chamber and I can see some light coming out there. I'm gonna pop the bolt in and just cycle the bolt. Oh my hat, it feels so good. Just cycle that bolt, make sure your rifle operates as it should. Sometimes an action screw, depending on where you're buying your chassis or your action screws, or you don't have your action screws organized and you potentially use the wrong action screw, the action screw might actually interfere with that bolt operation. And that is actually something that I've personally experienced in the past with the friend's rifle. So guys, I hope you enjoyed. If you wanna learn more about precision rifle, long range shooting, you're into hunting, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. 
We absolutely value your opinions. Leave us a comment and a like, and as always, share these videos with your friends. And once again, thanks to MDT Sporting Goods for providing this MDT Timber Frontier stock for us to play with in our upcoming video. Anyway, with that said, see you in the next one.